Hello, I'm Luxbrush. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Episodes 1 and 2. Would you like to start things off? <laughs> um, as a gigantic Sailor Moon fan, absolutely. Oh my <laughs> goodness, the show is beautiful. An amazing update. Very shiny. Very shiny. And the art style is just so well done, and it feels a lot like the style of the manga. They did a wonderful job of bringing that into animation over its older predecessor. Yeah, and the original anime is great. I'm always going to enjoy it, but it hasn't aged well, and it did have a lot of deviations from the manga. What anime adaptation doesn't, besides possibly Yu Yu Hakusho. Yeah, that one's very close to the original, except for the endings. Yeah, but Sailor Moon Crystal really evokes the feel of the manga, even in its colors. You know, they're slightly more pastel, which matches the color images that were part of the manga. The costumes are different, too. They take after the manga version rather than the first anime. And I'm really enjoying the way they draw things, animation overall, how smooth it is. Though I have seen some points where they're, where they're obviously cutting corners to be able to put more money into the animation for the fight scenes. Like, there was this one scene in the first episode where I keep wanting to say Serena because I never really bothered to remember Usagi's name. She was walking down the street, and the animation felt a little bit stilted, but everywhere else it was nice and smooth, so I'm like, and they went, yeah, she's just walking. We're gonna need money for the fight scenes. Okay. <laughs> and then the transformations are really nice, but you can obviously, at times, I should say, obviously at times feel that the CG is just a little too smooth to match the rest of the animation. It just kind of stands out at you. It kind of has that slight um, uncanny valley feel to it compared to other parts of the CG for the transformation, where it's like, oh, that blends in very nicely. Yeah, there were moments in Usagi's transformation sequence that really were the CG was just screaming, I'm CG, instead of me going, oh, that's CG enhanced, like I feel during the entire intro song. Oh, that intro is very well done, and it gives us a nice preview of what they're planning on doing with certain parts of the animation and how they're planning on doing the attacks, and the subtitles are just pretty good so far. And I just never, and I guess they're going with Tiara Boomerang this time instead of Frisbee or Moon Tiara Magic as the American dub did in the past. Well, I can handle Boomerang over Frisbee, so <laughs> there are worse attack names that one could call out. But I really like the way they're doing the animation. You can actually see the Tiara's transformation from Tiara to Weapon. Though with it being fully circular, it looks more like Xena's weapon, and that makes me think more frisbee-like rather than boomerang-like. Well, there are circular boomerangs. Well, maybe that's why they came to the decision of boomerang this time then. Hmm. So I think my manga translation's stuck with frisbee. And I really like how they're handling the writing for this. It feels so much smoother. The pacing feels better for each episode, it's doing a good job of pointing things out that weren't pointed out in the older anime, like that uh, connection between Usagi and Tuxedo Mask that kind of happens right off the bat, and they're keeping the, what is it, I know it's not Muffin Head, God, Bun Head, there we are. <laughs> bun Head. <laughs> and they're keeping the Bun Head, though I do miss Meatball Head, um, <laughs> though I'm pretty sure yes. that was an American thing. That was very American, because I don't think the word bun to an American audience evokes that round image. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of localization was done for the U.S. adaptation of Sailor Moon. You know, at that time, localization was very heavy-handed. I love how they're really pushing that on the re-release, the re-release and redub over here. Everything's being intact. We've got the license for everything. We're redubbing everything. The original relationships are being tacked. Everything's being intact. Please buy it. I don't think they had to beg that much, but... <laughs> no, they didn't have to. Yeah. And considering how well Crystal is doing, yeah, I think Viz actually got a pretty good deal here. Very much so. And I'm really loving the way Mamoru looks in this new series. I am falling in love with my favorite anime guy all over again. <laughs> ah, yes. Mamoru or Tuxedo Mask or Tuxedo Kamen. <laughs> <laughs> But that kind of reminds me of the fact that, that there was this one show I think was called Masked Common over here. And I'm like, 
You do realize you're saying mask twice. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I like about Tuxedo Common is handled in this version of the anime as opposed to the first version is he has a reason to be there. We're showing from the beginning that he's looking for the legendary silver crystal. Oh, and another point about him. I love how he's now like in a tuxedo all the time. <laughs> And how Usagi even comments on it. What kind of guy wears a tuxedo <laughs> during the day? Yeah, afternoon, come on. <laughs> and everything just feels like it's being handled so much better. And it feels so much better. Like I said, the pacing and the writing and the characters are just much better. For me, Usagi is written so much better. She doesn't feel like this um, useless dunderhead like she did at the beginning of the... The older anime. She feels like she's an, a, a bit of an idiot, bit of scattered brained, still clumsy, but she doesn't feel absolutely useless. Like, how can she be doing this stuff? She now has a purpose. She's now more grounded. She now has more of a complete character to her. And that leads me to the first anime female I was like, oh my god, she's so awesome. <laughs> Amy, she like, she was like the first female character I really liked and respected, so. That is so cool, and she's really well written in this. She actually has this time where she has it like, friends? You're calling me a friend? I have to save you now! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because she has that moment, and there's a decent lead up to it. It isn't suddenly, oh, you said we're friends, so now we're friends, and because we're friends, I must save you. We have a genuine lead up. Yeah, and speaking of lead ups, the build up in that episode where Amy is introduced is just so well done. It feels better it feels like there's a lot more going on and there's, a, there's more of a threat in that episode than it felt like to me in the original episode or should say the um older anime well in the older anime amy didn't both did and didn't perceive the threat in the same way because she wasn't using the study disc because she didn't like it but at the same time she was defending the class i also actually kind of shut it at the screen when tuxedo showed up i was like oh yeah <laughs> Because it was just, just the right amount of buildup that was like, what is Amy? Are they going to have Amy save her? What's going on? Oh my god, there's talking going on? There's a threat? And then boom! Dixie Mask grabs her, and it's a great moment between the two of them. And I was like, yes! And I think Amy's intelligence really shows in that she figures out very quickly that she's Sailor Mercury and announces herself as Sailor Mercury because she has Sailor Moon's introduction as an example and the fact that Luna told her to use Mercury in her transformation phrase. Oh, that reminds me of the whole, your cat talked, didn't it? Uh, no, no, I don't know. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that was a great little piece because Tuxedo Mask has always been shown as kind of a smart character. He's able to figure things out. So I'm guessing that's going to lead up to something else later. Like when we start him maybe going to look for the princess or going to figure out who the Sailor Scouts actually are, that might actually help him figure out what's going on quicker. Well, if I recall in the manga correctly, he actually made a lot of headway in the Sailor V video game, which means he was cracking secrets and getting closer to Central Command. So I like that we're reintegrating the arcade as more than a place where Usagi spends her time. And overall, I think the show's really doing a really good homage to the manga itself. And it's even adding stuff in from the an the older anime, but it's just using it to give people familiarity with it and not using it to actually base anything off of, really. Um, example, please. I, I don't remember the arcade being as important in the manga as it is in the original anime. Uh... The arcade always actually felt to me less important in the original anime than it is in the manga. When I was reading the manga when I was younger, so the comic mix copies and the Tokyo Pop copies, not the nice re-release that we have now, it was where the command center was. And I'm going to butcher his name. So the guy who works there part-time actually ends up knowing that they're Sailor Scouts. So the arcade is extremely important. Hmm. I guess I should have reread the manga before this, because <laughs> I don't remember that at all. <laughs> but yeah, it just feels like they're paying great homage to the manga. To me, it seems like there's lots of little things from the original anime, but it's like just little tiny things. Nothing I can really pick up, but it's like it feels familiar without feeling like the manga familiar. It feels familiar from the old anime to me, I should say. But... Everything else is like so improved, so. 
Well, in the first episode, the quest is the same. You know, Naru's mom gets taken over by one of the Dark Kingdom's yokai, and Usagi has to rescue her. So that setup is the same. You know, and Usagi throwing the test over her shoulder and hitting Mamoru, leaving the jewelry store all depressed because she can't afford anything and can't ask for anything because of her low test score, being kicked out of the house because of her low test score, not listening to Luna and only getting excited when she's given a gift, not believing that it's real until she actually gets hurt, the screaming and the ultrasonic waves, that actually holds true across all three. Oh, that reminds me. There, I don't remember that original comment in the Amy episode where the monster said, ultrasonic waves don't affect me in the... Um, I think it may have been in the manga, but I can't remember. But I know it wasn't in the original anime. Actually, the older anime. It wasn't. The first anime really did not make continued use of the ultrasonic wave attack. It was abandoned rather quickly. And it was nice to see it utilized again. Even though Yusagi doesn't do it intentionally, ever. She's just crying. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like an emergency backup. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, and the voice acting is really good so far. I am getting a little bit annoyed by the whining, but I think that's intentional. So it's not like, oh, the voice actor is doing bad. No, it's like, oh, the voice actor wants to give you just that much annoyance, because in real life, that would be kind of annoying. <laughs> yeah, well, in every version, Usagi's always been a crybaby and a bit of a whiner, so that needs to come across. I'm glad this version of the anime isn't shoving it down our throats. Is in the first anime, you get that intro sequence for like, I don't even know how many episodes they keep doing it, where they go, hi, I'm Yusagi, you know, I'm this age, I go to this school, everything was normal, and then this cat showed up, and suddenly I have to fight bad guys. They do that for so many episodes. How many episodes do you think someone has missed? that you have to tell me this every episode. You don't need to shove it down my throat. Yeah, I guess it was kind of a mentality back then that, oh, they're watching it once every week. We need to remind them what happened from the previous week. With at least the general story every week for some reason. <laughs> and the scene changes for where we would have the commercial breaks if we were watching on regular television. Oh, yes. And where we do have the internet regulated commercial breaks those beautiful still shots oh yes and they really point out some nice stuff and it feels like it's right out of the manga fully colored and everything and with the characters being in the dark silhouette it reminds me of the closing song of the original anime where both uh, Sailor Moon and Tuxedo Mask are shown in silhouette form and that reminds me as we're talking about stuff that closing sequence like that the music and the sound effects and everything is really well done i didn't realize how out of place some of the sound effects sounded in the older anime until i watched this one and everything just fits it's subtle there's a little bit of some music here the sound effect and tone works really well and then i've been seeing clips from the older anime since they're getting re to re-release it where they're showing dubs the new um, dub voices and the sound effects they use are kind of jarring in a way now that I've experienced this new one. It's almost going to be hard to go back and watch the original even though I've pre-ordered it. <laughs> I know. I traded in all of my Sailor Moon DVDs in order to pre-order the new Sailor Moon DVDs. Even though I normally watch sub, I definitely want to support the new release because I've wanted it for so long. And my set did have both a missing episode and a missing season. Mm. And this news is supposed to include all of the episodes, so hopefully you get that missing episode back, as it were. Yeah, it is supposed to be included. I think they actually included a clip of it in the trailer when they were saying, See, we got everything! <laughs> but back to Sailor Moon Crystal. So, other than pretty, shiny, good voice acting, nice pacing, beautiful music, nice sound effects, Good tone. Mm -hmm. I am a little surprised that it looks like we're going to get Ray-Chan next episode. I know that this is a shorter series. Well, intended to be a shorter series with the reaction they're getting. They may opt for additional seasons. Because mm -hmm. there's plenty of material to work from. Mm -hmm. But in the manga, Amy and Usagi are together for a little while before Ray-Chan joins the group. And it looks like we're 
going to get her next episode. Or they might just introduce her, but not introduce her as a scout yet. Mm. But Ray goes to a different school, so it would be harder for them to run into her. Is the main reason hmm. they run into her is because they go to the shrine because of the disappearances that are happening on the bus line. Hmm. Well, we'll see. Either way, we're probably going to get to see her interact with her, either as a lead-up to her being a Sailor Scout in the episode, or her being introduced as a character until they actually go about turning her into a Sailor Scout, or showing that she's a Sailor Scout. It'll be interesting to see, but that row of candles that just reminded me of Agnes's scene from the Bravely Default intro. <laughs> ah yes, Bravely Default. We need to get back to playing that. Uh, but there's so much stuff to watch and do. I know. I know. Silly real life. <laughs> I still love how Usagi thinks, oh, I wish I could be a princess or I wish I could be Sailor V because then I wouldn't have to go to school anymore. And she's both of those and still has to go to school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, it's like foreshadowing? Not really. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that also makes me wonder how many people are actually watching any kind of Sailor Moon for the first time. Well, considering we're looking at, what, the 20th, 25th anniversary? You know, there's a whole generation who's probably never watched it or read the manga, and this could be their first exposure. And that's another nice thing about Crystal is they're not relying on you being familiar with the series already. They're presenting it to you as a new item. I mean, it's fun knowing, you know, the previous iterations and presentations of the storyline, but it's not required to enjoy the series. So they're not going, oh, you know, please look at this in order to understand this. They're presenting it to you cleanly, but at the same time they're not hitting you with a plot mallet. Or if they are, it doesn't feel like it. I think this comes from the pacing of the episodes, which you can use a plot mallet as long as you pace it outright in the episodes you use it in. Because sometimes they just front load it in like the first five minutes of a show and you're like, yeah, thank you, I needed that. You couldn't have like used the rest of the episode to explain that. <laughs> Or it could be like a children's show where you get the entire plot mallet in the intro song. <laughs> uh, but some of those are really great, like the Animaniacs or Tiny Toons. <laughs> it works with the more comedic shows, you know, even Super Robot Monkey Team Hyperforce Go. We touched on the transformation sequences, but I wanted to go a little more on to Amy's transformation. Is you know being not Sailor Moon, they didn't put quite as much into it as the Sailor Moon transformation, but they still put a lot of effort into it because transformation sequences get reused all the time, so you get a lot of mileage for the money you put into them. And hers felt much smoother to me than Sailor Moon's, and it really evoked the feeling of the original transformation sequence from the manga. with. And I could still see and feel the CG, but it wasn't as jarring as Sailor Moon's. Sailor Moon is, is both very jarring to me, and there's also points where her proportions look wrong. Like, there's one point where her arm looks ridiculously slender to me. I would probably say the same thing about Amy's transformation if it wasn't for the fact that when I was watching it, yet the compression really ate that scene up. So I'm going to try to find it again later and hopefully watch it a little bit clearer, because I was watching it going, God... I can't really tell if it's better or not because suddenly the compression decided to just dissolve the scene into a bunch of blurry pixels, which it didn't do during her, her first attack, which is also well done in animation-wise. I mean, I know it's a water attack, but the first moment where she has those spears, they reminded me of Tomoe's Foxfire from Kamisama Kiss. Mm, which is another show we, we both are enjoying. <laughs> <laughs> Overall, I'm really liking the way they're handling this. The episodes flow well, the plot is doing a really good job, the pacing is awesome, the writing and characterization is really good, voice acting is excellent, music, sound, all of it's really good so far. It's going to be hard to go back and watch the older series, but I'm probably still going to enjoy it. How about you? Well, Sailor Moon Crystal is... Just, it's absolutely beautiful. It's staying very true to the manga. They obviously put a lot of time and effort into this. And absolutely no disrespect to the first animated version. It hasn't 
aged as well as some animations do and that age shows a little bit when you go back and rewatch it even in you know the purest uncut format and that does happen i mean you know everyone gets on inuyasha for being a ripoff of Fushigi Yugi, but you go back and watch the mysterious play and it looks very dated. It's not that it isn't excellent, it just hasn't aged well. And I think that's the case with the original Sailor Moon, both that it strayed from the manga so we had the differences and some filler arcs, cough, doom tree cough, <laughs> and that just what can be done in animation has changed so much of just what is possible. So definitely enjoying Sailor Moon Crystal. Can't wait for the next episode and still enjoying the original. Well, this has been our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal episodes 1 and 2. We're really looking forward to the next episode and we'd like to continue to do these episodes on Sailor Moon Crystal. So we're looking at doing one per every two episodes, which means you should see one of these about once a month. We hope you enjoy them. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed, please consider subscribing and or leaving a comment. Please be nice. If you'd like to see more of Lux's artwork or keep track of what we are up to, you can check out his accounts over on DeviantArt and Tumblr. Links in the description. Here's an outtake from this episode. And this is our thoughts on... I almost said My Little Pony. <laughs> And this is our thoughts on Sailor Moon Crystal, Episode 1 and 2. I had to find a kind of little spot to talk for probably a half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only problem, I can't pace either because that gets picked up really easily. <laughs> <laughs> well, you need to learn to walk quietly like I do. <laughs> I can walk quietly, but this floor is creak, creak, creak. I reiterate. <laughs> <sighs> Okay, let's get this going before I melt. Um, <laughs> 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 ah.